Yeah, I think it's right. There you go. All right, ready to go, Arm? Yep. Good evening and welcome to the uh, regular meeting of the Naperville Park District Board of Commissioners. It is Thursday, May 14th, 2020. I'd like to call the meeting to order at 7.01 p.m. Bridget, can you please take the roll? Let's uh, rise and uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance. And since everybody's remote, uh, please face to the east. To the flag, United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, you try and connect on the laptop so you get a bigger screen. Is there one over here? Well, so if you can please uh, put your microphone on mute. We're hearing uh, some feedback from the group. So if everyone can please put your microphone on mute and then when it comes time to speak, it can be activated. Thank you. Bridget, please take the roll. President Janner? Here. Vice President King? Here. Commissioner Carlson? Here. Commissioner Kim? Yes. Okay. Commissioner Groom? Here. Commissioner Riley? Here. Commissioner Todd? Here. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is matters from the public. The Board of Commissioners will now receive public comment regarding non agenda item topics, those being submitted via voicemail, video, or email presented first. Then from those that have joined remotely and virtually, raise their hand. You can click on participants under meeting controls to access this option within Zoom. And you'll be recognized by the chair. Comment is limited, strictly limited to three minutes per individual. The board will receive public comment regarding agenda topics when each agenda item is being considered by the board by the same procedure and also no longer than three minutes. So Bridget, is there anyone that signed up to speak on a non-agenda item tonight? I have one submitted via email by Michael Yackley on May 14th, 2020. It states, amazing, nobody has the balls to step up and be liable for praise or blame. They are appealing to the governor's orders about closing facilities. Maybe you need to realize the history of Naperville. Naperville was a farming community that relied on the Chicago economy. It became a bedroom community that relied even more and still does rely on jobs in and around Chicago. Naperville is not an island except for all the people in local government, city of Naperville, park districts, etc. The people who pay the taxes that pay your salary work in and around a strong Chicago economy. Apparently, the park district is bleeding money and Jan Doris is losing money in his horse business. Teacher Price is filing letters on behalf of the park district. The parks are open. Just the parking lots are closed for some stupid reason and no money is coming in. You can always raise taxes just like every other year. Wake up call. The park district is overrated. You have become babies, a babysitting service for the young and the old. You generate income for sports and other businesses who rely on your programs to generate income, salaries, and awards. Golf courses could have been open sooner and more completely with a well thought out plan. The golf courses that generate income for a lot of park district programs and salaries. Please use this or enter this email in your virtual meeting. Thank you. Any others? Nothing general, no. Okay, then we'll move on to updates and reports. Item 3.1 is the Riverwalk Commission update. Commissioner Carlson, no report. Thank you. Next is the uh, Parks Foundation update. Vice President King, anything there? No report. Thank you. Next is the Finance Committee. Commissioners Carlson or McBroom, anything there? Yes. Uh, the Finance Committee met 
9 a.m. Uh, this morning, Thursday, via Zoom, Tom Sawyer of Sawyer Faldudo, manager for the district's fixed income portfolio, presented the quarterly investment performance report for the period ending March 31st, 2020. The first quarter net returns of 2.62% underperformed the benchmark at 2.76%. The net returns since the inception of the portfolio from June 2011 through March 2020 equaled 1.44%, outperforming the benchmark at 1.35%. The district's cumulative investment of $6 million currently has a value of $6.7 million, a $700,000 gain to the portfolio. Eric Anderson of Piper Sandler, Sadler presented an economic overview and commentary on the municipal bond market and information relating to the potential refunding of the district's 2011A limited park bonds and 2011B debt certificates. The potential refunding would generate interest savings and would not produce new money. The committee recommended the information be presented to the board at the May 28th meeting. Staff presented an overview of the district's IMRF pension account as of December 31st, 2019. The district's pension account continues to be well-funded at 91.4% with an unfunded liability of $2.2 million, which is an increase of $200,000 from 2018. The district's contribution rate for 2020 at 8.66% is below the statewide average at 9.7%. The district's preliminary rate for 2021 is 1%, which is an increase of 1.7%. That's all back to you, President Janner. Thank you, Mr. Carlson, for that report. That's the same honor, gentlemen. How do you raise your hand? Yeah. Sir, are you asking to make a, a public comment? So <clears throat> I sent an email earlier and um, it said you have to virtually raise your hand. And when you're on the virtual uh, setup here, I can't see where you actually raise your hand. Yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and, and uh, you, you want to make a public nomination, sir? I do, yes. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and pause the uh, pause the report then to accept your, your public comment. Please state your name and your street address, and then uh, you'll have exactly three minutes, please. Excellent. Sorry about that. If I uh, missed my chance there, I, I didn't know the the sequencing. But my name is Zach Gerald, um, two eight one Winding Creek Drive, and uh, I just want to comment that um, my kids are sixth generation Naperville. Uh, you know, we kind of live and breathe the city and uh, we actually have a family house in the Naperville settlement and watching what's going down in our in our state right now um, you know I've, I've really uh, had some issues with what's going on and uh, we've had good decision making through the years and I've really enjoyed watching the city grow and prosper but I think we're at a crossroads and uh, we're looking to the leaders of our city to stand up against the governor of Illinois uh, not allowing our kids to play in the parks, canceling sports leagues, unacceptable. I just read that Indiana leagues are now open. Naperville has a very low uh, count in the epidemic. Let the individual freedom decide. I have four children, and my decision is a resounding yes, and we should let the kids play. And we need uh, this group here in the room to stand up for it. That's my comment. Thank you, sir. Let's uh, continue on with the reports. Item 3.4, uh, Legislative Committee, Commissioner McBroom, Commissioner Riley, anything there? No Thank report. You. Thank you. Then let's move on to the Parks and Recreation Committee report, Commissioner Riley. No report. Thank you. Next is the uh, Board President update. Um, first, I'd like to thank our, our leadership team and our staff for their tireless day and night effort to help the Naperville Park District navigate the impact of COVID-19 for our residents and our community. For those not familiar with our operation, it may appear on the surface 
that the job would be easier when some programs and facilities are shut down. I have come to recognize that it's actually just the opposite. Almost everyone on our staff has been even more challenged since normal routines have gone by the wayside and there are so many question marks and so much uncertainty to navigate through, not to mention a reduced workforce due to layoffs and a drastic increase in resident correspondence from people looking for answers and direction. Special thanks goes out to our Executive Director Ray McGurry and our Legal Counsel Dirk Price for their leadership, along with Brad Wilson, our Director of Recreation, who has been tasked with identifying completely new and different ways to look at recreation here within the Naperville Park District. These gentlemen truly are the best in the business. Second, I would like to personally thank every resident that took the time to send an email, leave a voicemail, send in a video clip, or join us here this evening. I have read and reviewed every single one of these messages and have taken them into consideration. Many of the points uh, were very thoughtful and, uh, and um, very well written. While resident opinions are very vastly and considerably, it seems that every resident truly wants a resolution that is best, not only for their own situation, but for the community at large. For those that may not be aware, the Naperville Park District is not a home rule agency. What that means is we are subordinate to the state government as per our state constitution, and we must follow the state law and our governor's orders. To my knowledge, everything we have lined up with regard to our current plan for reopening the park district is consistent with the governor's order and not in defiance of that order. You'll hear that plan in Executive Director McGurry's report, which will immediately follow mine. I cannot speak for every member of our board and staff, but I personally believe in law and order, and I think that law and order is critical in any society or community. Our Executive Director here is a former Chief of Police, and so I would assume he feels the same way about the importance of law and order. That said, if we wish to oppose a governor's order, we have a number of different options for lawfully doing so. We can write the governor a letter. We can band together with other park districts to write a letter. We could collaborate with the Illinois Association of Park Districts to lobby the governor and state government. We could circulate a petition. We could participate in a peaceful protest. We could seek relief from the court system by challenging some element of the order. This evening, this body will consider all of those options with regard to the Restore Illinois order, including the last option described. Our board policy is such that if at least two commissioners wish to have an item on the agenda for action, then that item gets placed on the agenda, which is why we will be discussing possible litigation here this evening. A majority of the board, four out of seven commissioners, would need to support an action item in order for it to move forward. The mission of the Naperville Park District, which this body has spent considerable time crafting over the years, is to provide recreation and park experiences <laughs> that promote healthy lives, healthy minds, and a healthy community. We care about both physical and mental health. Our vision statement begins with these five words, to be a national leader. During this time of crisis, national emergency and uncertainty, I think we need to look to our mission and look to our vision when making decisions that could potentially impact thousands of neighborhood residents, not to mention the ripple effect our, our actions could have on other park districts and other communities that may look to us for leadership. I look forward to discussing our options here this evening and fully trust my fellow commissioners and our staff to work together in guiding us through these challenges that we face. That being said, I'll turn it over to our Executive Director, Ray McGurry, for his report. We have uh, apparently one commissioner is having some technical issues, so we're going to go ahead and pause for just a minute or two, see if he can get back online here, and then we'll proceed with the executive director's report. So we appreciate your patience. I'm going to 
haven't had a nickname in a while, so I like it. I feel like Captain Dover would have like alligator arms like with All right, we're going to go ahead and resume our meeting. Again, we thank you for your patience during that short delay, and we'll hope Commissioner Egan will be back with us very shortly here. So, uh, again, I'll turn it over to our Executive Director, Ray McGurry, for the Executive Director Report. Thank you, uh, President Tanner. Uh, the report is a little lengthy, but um, it's important to go through some of the steps here uh, that we're taking uh, as we move forward through the COVID-19 crisis. So I'm going to read a, a statement here. The Naval Park District is taking a proactive stance to keep our program participants and facility guests healthy and safe during the COVID-19 crisis. As a local unit of government, our operations are essential under the governor's executive order, and the Park District intends to fulfill its mission to provide recreation opportunities for our residents. We understand that an important part of being healthy includes staying active, and that includes being able to use some of the outdoor amenities and programs that the Park District provides. Therefore, we are reopening our sports courts, disc golf, state, uh, skate parks, and other amenities. Consistent with the governor's order, use of these facilities requires all of us to act responsibly and police ourselves. We're also proceeding with outdoor summer programs, including camps, but with substantial modifications to adhere to required social distancing practices per the guidelines received from the health officials regarding the operation of our programs. The following schedule outlines the district's plan for program registration, facility reopening, and the start of the summer programs. So on, starting on May 26th, the summer digital program guide will be released for our residents. Our customer service staff will begin to transition back to registration office functions in preparation uh, for summer registration. And our 848-5000 phone line um, will be staffed again Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. On Monday, June 1st, resident registration begins at 8.30 a.m. Full-time customer service staff resume registration office functions, office online um, and online functions. Um, but again, uh, to, to underscore the buildings will remain closed to the public uh, on June 1st. The April Park District staff um, will begin to resume on-site office hours, again, with staggered times. Part-time staff training for summer programming begins. The paddle boat kayak rental operations will begin. Outdoor basketball courts and sand volleyball courts will reopen. That will take some time uh, to put up the rims that we had to take down uh, probably four or five weeks ago. Our disc golf course will reopen. Again, this will take some time to get that um, put up and uh, ready to go. Our skate parks reopen. Our parking lots reopen. And our athletic field drive in use is allowed. Um, on June 2nd and 3rd, fall registration starts at noon for our residents. On June 4th, 
non-resident registration for all summer programs and fall soccer begins at 8.30 a.m., as well as our 95th Street Farmer's Market will open for the season. On Monday, June 15th, summer programs and camps begin with reduced program sizes. Youth athletic leagues resume, again, with uh, reduced roster sizes. Athletic field rentals resume. Re uh, renters um, must adhere to all the laws and the regulations, and we will stipulate those uh, before renting any uh, space to uh, any outside groups. Fort Hill, the uh, uh, Rubin Center, Knock Knowles Nature Center, 95th Street, and other uh, buildings will be open for classes and programs. Again, all will have reduced class sizes. Fort Hill Fitness Center will remain closed. Uh, building hours will be dependent on program use. The Fort Hill um, uh, service desk remains open for in-person registration and facility rentals. The Sportsman's Park uh, trap shooting reopens for Thursday and Sunday shooting. Again, we are in the process of uh, arranging uh, uh, sizes of people that will be allowed at one time to be at those, that facility. And full-time custodial staff transitions back to custodial operations from uh, the park's operations. Centennial Beach 2020 season, although the Park District tentatively plans to open Centennial Beach on uh, Saturday, June 20th, doing so is contingent on receiving regulatory guidance from the Illinois Department of Public Health. If the public, uh, Department of Public Health is listening tonight, I implore you to please give us a decision to all aquatic facilities across the state. I understand this is a very difficult decision you have to make, but it's a decision you must make, one way or the other. The district remains hopeful that we'll be able to proceed with a swimming season. However, it is possible the facility may not open for public swim, but instead for smaller aquatic classes only. Although over the um, past several weeks, the Park District introduced a, uh, introduced a wide variety of virtual activities, the fact is that many of our programs, including our summer camps, are set up for in-person participa uh, participation. For those residents who are comfortable participating in these activities, the Park District will follow guidelines received from the health officials regarding the operation of our programs. The Park District is using, uh, is using the following criteria in planning for these uh, uh, on-site activities. Reduced program sizes, alternate program sizes, locations, and reduced participant maximum levels are being implemented within programs. We're also using multiple areas of parks and when possible providing options for semi-private and private instruction. Practicing good hygiene. More frequent hand washing requirements have been implemented within programs, such as the beginning and ending of uh, all our youth programs, or the availability and or the availability, availability of hand sanitizer for adults. Also, depending upon program activity types, additional hand washing breaks may be included. Staggering program times. To avoid large gatherings during program check-in and check, uh, check-out times, we are staggering class, camp, and game times. Increasing equipment cleaning. New standards have been implemented to ensure the regular cleaning of equipment. Additionally, disinfecting, disinfecting wipes are available in several facilities for program participants to wipe down equipment um, after they have used it. Modifying program activities. The Park District uh, day camp experiences have been adjusted by eliminating large gatherings and focusing more on outdoor activities and hikes and bringing entertainment to camps and programs versus taking field trips. And finally, although park staff has continued to work in the field and we have transitioned back some customer service uh, staff to work uh, at the golf courses in recent weeks, our H HR staff is developing a plan to transition back all full-time staff to the respective facilities. The plan is to begin so June 1st with a goal of completing the transition by July 1st or when phase four of the restored Illinois plan begins, whichever comes first. Facilities will be equipped with hand sanitizer, disinfect, disinfecting wipes, and signage reminding uh, staff where face coverings or where to wear face coverings are required. I think that's enough. Thank you, uh, Executive Director McGurry. Next, we'll move on to item four on our agenda: the monthly treasurer's report. Move to approve the March 2020 treasurer report. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Bridget, please take the roll. Vice President King? Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. 
Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Egan? Aye. Commissioner McBroom? Yes. Commissioner Todd? Commissioner Todd? Yes, I said yes. Thank you. President Gator. Yes. Next, we'll move on to item five, which is the consent agenda. Bridget, can you please read into the record the items for consideration on the consent agenda tonight? Item 5.1, approved April 2020 disbursements in the amount of $1,374,502.15. 5.2, approved April 2020 disbursements made through the Bank of America Purchasing Card Program in the amount of $104,232.24. 5.3, approved April 2020 disbursements made through the FinTech electronic payment system in the amount of $565.60. 5.4, approved April 2020 customer refunds in the amount of $39,988.71. 5.5, approved April 23, 2020 regular payment minutes. Item 5.6, approved ordinance 980, authorizing the agreement for land cash contribution pursuant to City of Naperville Code Section 7-3-5, Section 12.7, for McDowell Point Development. Item 5.7, award the contract for the Nike Sports Complex Synthetic Turf Field Replacement Site Project to Wilkinson Excavating in the amount of $63,400. And 5.8, approve the appointment of Tom Stibby, North Park's Operations Manager, to serve as staff representative to the River Rock Commission. Thank you. Are there any items to be removed from the consent agenda? Commissioner Egan? Uh, can we pull 5.1, 5.3, and 5.6, please? That's 5.1, 5.3, and 5.6. Correct. Thank you. Any others? At this time, then, we'll entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda. Move to accept consent agenda items 5.2, 5.4, 5.5, 5.7, .5, and 5.8. Second. Any discussion? Bridget, please take the roll. Vice President King? Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Egan? Aye. Commissioner McBroom? Yes. Commissioner Todd? Yes. President Jack? Yes. Next, we'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Do we have any discussion or just move to approve it? Voice vote, isn't it? Voice vote, just move to approve it, then we'll take a second. Yeah. Move to approve, consent agenda. Move to, move to approve. Second. This is a voice vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Now under unfinished business, we will go ahead and pick up the items that were pulled from the consent agenda. So at this time, we'll entertain a motion to approve item 5.1, the April 2020 disbursements in the amount of $1,374,502.15. We have a motion to approve that one. Yes. Motion by Commissioner Reed. Second by. Second. Uh, I think I heard Commissioner Riley first. So mo motion by Commissioner King. Second by Commissioner Riley. Any discussion on this one? My standard no vote for the four percent raises. I won't be supporting it. Any other Sorry. discussion? Just a question, are, are there any um, raises in this one, in 5.1? No. There's no, so so why do we continue doing that? Well, again, we have ADP and other resources out there. So, you know, if, if uh, you're making a motion there, Commissioner King, to include all raises and bonuses and be approved by unanimous consent on the agenda, I fully support that. Otherwise, I still can't consciously stand for giving 4% raises, which are twice the rate of CPI, especially in today's environment when people are losing their businesses and wines at food pantries are two and three times X. But it's not part of the April disbursements. Well, ADP, That's what we're voting on. 
ADP is an expense that's connected to payroll. I'm adjusting to that expense. I appreciate y'all and supporting 4% raises. I just don't. I understand your reasoning and we can agree to disagree, but 4% raises in today's environment is totally unacceptable. Any other discussion? Move on. Please take the roll. Did she say hold on? I think she said I'm done. Oh, okay. Vice President King? Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Egan? No. Commissioner McGroom? No. Commissioner Todd? Yes. Carson Janet? Yes. Next, uh, We'll entertain a motion to approve item 5.3, the April 2020 disbursements made through the FinTech electronic payment system in the amount of $565.60. Move to appro approve the consent item, item 5.3. Second. Motion by uh, Commissioner King or Vice President King, second by, I think it was Commissioner Riley. Uh, any discussion on this one? Commissioner Egan. These expenditures are for alcohol. Alcohol does not support our mission of health and well being. Uh, I say we return the inventory and get a credit for this expenditure. I do not support this expenditure. Any other discussion? Bridget, please take the roll. President King? Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Egan? No. Commissioner McGroom? Yes. Commissioner Todd? Yes. President Chair? Yes. Next, I'll entertain a motion to approve item 5.6 related to Ordinance 980, authorizing the agreement for land cash contribution pursuant to City of Naperville Code Section 7-3-5. 12.7 for McDonald Point Development. Move to approve consent agenda item 5.6. Second. Motion by Vice President King, second by Commissioner Riley. Any discussion? Commissioner Egan. Worthwhile development. Um, unfortunately, I believe we gave up too much um, by, by not collecting the full uh, fees. We heard the rest of Naperville. Uh, appreciate that they are going to build their own amenities, but we have to think of the larger picture here. So I won't be supporting this. Any other discussion? Bridget, please take the roll. Vice President King? Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Egan? No. Commissioner McGroom? Yes. Commissioner Todd? Yes. Yes. Next, we'll move on to item seven, which is our discussion items. And we'll begin with uh, item 7.1, the April 2020 financials update. Great. Director Stanish. Great. Thank you. Um, so this evening, I just wanted to give a quick update on our April financials. They will be, our April treasurer's report will be in the weekly packet. will be coming to you tomorrow uh, with um, our typical report and cover letter. Um, but just some highlights here. Um, and before, uh, it's coming to you tomorrow, before I get into the numbers, we will be, it will be on the May 28th agenda for approval. So we move that up a couple weeks and work to get this information out as soon as possible based on all the uncertainty um, that we're dealing with right now. For the month of April, from a consolidated perspective, our revenues came in at 32,000 and our expenses at about two and a half million. Um, before you gasp at the two and a half million, it is a very normal for the month of April actually and the month of May that we do draw down money until we get our first property tax distribution. However, this year with program revenues um, coming, not coming in and doing refunds, uh, they have not is pretty well. Year to date through April, uh, we have 3.2 in revenues recognized and 9.3 and expenses, um, so that was a drawdown of 6.1 million. That drawdown is in part um, because of uh, spending for capital projects, so that's a timing. 
and it is um, about 1.2 million off of our typical drawdown for this time. Our average um, over the past three years has been about four and a half million. So we do expect to see these drawdowns. Um, they're just um, higher this year based on where we are. If we look at just our operating expenses for April, we typically have a $350,000 drawdown, and this year we're looking right now for April at $1.5 $1 million drawdown. So that $1.2 million difference over a typical year, really 900 of that is based on refunds that we've been doing um, through April for all of our programs. So um, we know where we stand with that. April did not um, produce any surprises for us. I'll just real quickly um, give you an update on the model that we did, uh, financial models, and we compared our April actual results to that worst case model um, that was updated using the 99.8% property tax receipts for our facilities. We looked at our three major funds, general, recreation, and golf. And our general fund, compared to our model, we ended up in a net better position of 120000 combination of a little bit better in revenues and lower on expenses. For a recreation fund, we're 113 in a better position than, than we actually modeled, and that is also a combination of um, about 200000 more in charges for services that we realized, and then a little bit more in expenses offsetting that um, from our estimates. And on the golf side, um, we ended up in a position 170,000 better than modeled. And I'll just real quick for our worst case model for the golf fund, we assumed that we were not going to be able to keep any of our revenues for season reserve funds or any kind of memberships. And that model, we assumed we were refunding all that back. When we found out May 1st, we would still be able to have some golf operations. Um, going forward, we think uh, while we will have some refunds in May, we're going to keep those programs and memberships up and running. As far as updated models, um, we are we have started updating um, the models that we had uh, shared with you before. And in the couple weeks to come, when we know what's happening more on a program basis and what's going on at the beach, we will be um, updating that worst case um, model as a baseline. That's the approach we'd like to take. Um, updating amounts for April, which we've done, and then building on that worst case with estimates as we reopen the district and move for more information. Um, so, uh, that's a quick overview. Again, you will be getting a packet tomorrow with the April Treasurer's Report. Thank you, uh, Director Stanish, for that report. Are there any uh, questions or comments on that report? Okay, the next few items are, uh, I, I suspect some items where uh, some folks are, would like to make a public comment on those items. So, uh, when I introduce the item, if you'd like to make a, uh, a public comment on that item specifically, uh, please raise your hand using the uh, functionality within Zoom. We'll do our best to organize it and, and call on you. And then once again, you'll have your, your three minutes uh, to, to please state your name and your address and then make your, your comment. So the next item, 7.2, is the golf courses reopening uh, agenda item. Is there anyone out there that uh, is here to make a public comment related to golf course reopening? Can you see this again? Okay. All right, seeing none, then um, Director Carlson, are you going to make a report here? Yes, please. Thank you very much. Uh, Spring River Neighborhood Golf Courses were opened on Friday, May 1st, after the state declared golf courses could reopen under strict restrictions to maintain safety. These restrictions included limiting groups to twosomes only, no clubhouse access, and keeping practice areas closed, plus several, several new safety guidelines to help minimize the opportunity for the virus to spread. Despite these restrictions, golfers have been eager to make a tee time and play golf again. Play at the golf course this month has been without any significant issue, with golfers and staff following the guidelines set by the state. Tee time demand has been high, Tea times are made seven days in advance for the public, and within a few hours of tea times becoming available online, they are close to sold out. We are running, running right now at nearly full utilization on days without rain or other poor weather. Despite the changes brought on by the restrictions, operations have been smooth. Golfers are required to conform, confirm purchase online or via phone with a credit card before arriving, and no walk-up play is allowed. 
The majority of our golfers have been walking, although a cart can be purchased if a person has a limitation that prevents them from walking 18 holes. Golfers overall understand the guidelines and have followed the restrictions so far without incident. Our operation of the golf courses have also changed due to the restrictions. I must commend the golf professional staff for the work they did to set up the golf courses to open as they needed to completely change how we operate, including how tee times and transactions are made and how we staff the operation. With the reduction in revenues due to the current restrictions, we strive for minimal labor to cover our operations within our current fiscal constraints while still making sure that they are run safely and efficiently. We couldn't have done that without the help of multiple departments, and we especially like to mention our appreciation for the customer service staff from the rec department for their help this month. The customer service staff has helped us staff the golf course counters, have been answering phones, and completing the customer's transactions. We have stepped in and quickly learned a new point of sale system and our golf operations, all while continuing to provide excellent customer service for our golf course customers. We expect to, as uh, things ramp up now with uh, the possible opening of the golf courses to foursomes and other uh, restrictions being eased, that eventually we will need to uh, onboard more of our golf course staff to start to fill in these roles. Thank you. Any uh, questions or comments? Commissioner Regan? Just, just a foreshadowing to my comments um, to uh, item 8.1. Um, golf is open, but golf is only open in twosomes, correct? Correct. So my family of four who lives together could not golf together under the current rules? They could not. So effectively, government is splitting families. In that case, yes. Thank you. Yeah, uh, just a quick comment here on, on golf. The, this, this agenda item was placed on the agenda before the governor rolled out his five-phase plan. Um, it's just an example of the lack of flexibility we have as a local municipality to make a decision to open a golf range to allow a family to golf together, um, consenting adults to golf together in a foursome. Um, my understanding is we just don't have that flexibility to pick and choose common sense things um, and make safety decisions uh, for our constituencies. Uh, and I, that legal opinion and that insurance opinion is what I believe led to agenda item 8.1. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on the uh, golf course reopening report? Okay, then we'll move on to item 7.3, public restrooms. Is there anyone that would like to make a comment on public restrooms? If so, please raise your hand and, and we'll recognize you. You guys put it on Okay, uh, seeing nobody, uh, Commissioner Egan, I think you asked that this agenda item be placed on there. Uh, what are your thoughts on, uh, on the public restroom agenda item? Um, from my standpoint, we need the people to be out and get active. Um, I appreciate that staffing is low. Um, while staff tries to do the right things to manage staffing as, as the private sector is doing. Um, even when I was a plant controller here in the city of Naperville, when times called for it, I had a broom in my hand. So if staff has to go out there at the upper levels and go out and clean bathrooms, God bless you, you gotta get the work done. But the people need to be out and they need to have access to the restrooms. President Janner. Yes, Commissioner Riley. Have we not already started opening uh, public restrooms? Yeah, I'll ask Executive Director McGurry if you would, would you mind uh, letting us know what's already been done in the area of public restrooms? Or, or yes, uh, Ray, has yes. Asked that, Ray has asked that I discuss this. Um, we currently have four that are open now. Uh, we have one up at Nike to support tennis and uh, pickleball, one at the cafe on the Riverwalk to support trail users on the Riverwalk, um, one at 
Pioneer Park to support trail users, and the washroom facilities at Knock Knowles Park is open to support use of that park and the south end of the trail. Thank you. Commissioner Egan? In a, in a normal year, if you will, or, or last year at this time, how many bathrooms were open? Uh, that would be 15. Total. How many we have open now? Four. There is the disparity, Commissioner Riley. We need to open bathrooms and let people use the restrooms that they're paying for. President Jenner? Yes, Commissioner Riley. I didn't realize this was a debate across the dais. I think that the reduced number of people uh, in the parks uh, is consistent with having fewer restrooms open. Unless it's your eight year old doing the pee pee dance in front of the closed restroom. Any other discussion or questions on this one? Right, and we will move on to item 7.4, summer programming. Is there anyone that would like to make a public comment on summer programming? If so, please raise your hand and you'll be recognized. Okay, if you didn't uh, catch that, uh, we have a video that was uh, sent in related to summer programming and uh, Omar, are you, or are you ready to like this? Yeah. Fire away. Hi, my name is Riley Tomlinson, and I live at 2508 Swan Night Court in Naperville. Because um, I would really like to be able to attend tonight's meeting. I, unfortunately, I can't do to some work obligations, but I'd like to voice my opinion on um, being able to open up the neighborhood parks. You know, as, as you can see in the background, I've got a pretty large family. I've got three boys and a daughter, and two of my boys play baseball here for the neighborhood Renegades, as well as my youngest son, who is uh, now old enough to play Naperville Little League. Um, we know the importance of what sports can do to our families, and growing up in a sports background, and growing up, um, my wife as well, we've been married for 10 years, she also played uh, sports growing up, it's something that's part of a livelihood. And, um, you know, as you watch our youth right now having to go through a, a pretty tumultuous time as well as we all are, um, we feel like it's time for us to be able to open up and let them play again in a, in a, in a, in a way that allows our kids to truly be children. Um, when you think about what the ask was from the government to, to shelter in place, we got to remember that was to, to make sure that our hospitals were – um, a wave of, of illness that's gone on and when you think about you know the future of, of our families and our kids sports is the background that keeps us um, you know moving forward you think about the hardest times in America when 9-11 happened when baseball came back to New York how big and how powerful that was and how that raised us up think about the same way that'll do when we open up our parks again to play ball um, we got to do it a safe way and we all know that but I think you know, given the right, um, you know, discussions, I think that, that we can all come together and agree that it's it's about our children and uh, living up to where we can have them remember these times, both good and bad. Remember how we should have acted at the same time, not help them lose sight of, you know, things like me when I was going to play a little league with my, my dad or, um, you know, watching, you know, my wife play ball at the floor or being able to run track and, you know, in the college that I went to as well. It's those type of things that, we don't really lose sight of and um, you know, sports is a way that can bring us all back together. And um, I appreciate you guys listening to me and my time. And um, again, living here in Naperville for four years, what I've learned is uh, this is a highly competitive, um, highly fun town. And uh, I think at this point we've done our job. It's time to let us kids get back to the ball field. Thank you all much. Go Renegades. Take care. Hi, my name is Riley Tomlinson and I live in 2508 Swan Dyke Court, Naperville. There you go. One more than I'll raise my hand. I'm not seeing anybody else raise their hand. You're giving the bottom right. You're giving this report. Yeah, just an introduction. Okay, then we'll move on to, uh, we'll, we'll stick with this item since we have no more speakers. Uh, 7.4 summer programming. I'll turn it over to Director Wilson. 
Yes, uh, as an executive director of Agri relayed in his report, uh, the park district staff, recreation staff, we are in the process of planning uh, to resume our programming, summer programs, uh, beginning June 15th. Uh, we're putting the final touches on the uh, program guide that will be released digitally on Tuesday, May 26th, uh, with summer program registration taking place on Monday, uh, starting Monday, June 1st. Um, as Executive Director McGurry mentioned, uh, there are a number of modifications that we're making within our programs uh, to ensure that we are following uh, the guidelines that are being provided to us by health officials, uh, such as reducing our program sizes, uh, introducing uh, good hygiene measures within programs, uh, disinfecting equipment, uh, so on. We will continue to work uh, towards putting protocols in place as we receive new guidelines from health officials uh, to be able to begin operating our summer day camps and other programs that we have throughout the, throughout the district. In addition to the programs that uh, we will be introducing, uh, where there is the in-person uh, interactions taking place in those small groups, uh, we will also be introducing and continuing our virtual classes uh, that have been uh, made possible this spring. We have over 125 uh, virtual classes that will be rolled out and available to uh, residents to also participate in this summer. So, Quite a few activities that are, uh, are uh, in line to uh, begin within the next several weeks. We we'll look forward to uh, the month of June when we can begin to uh, program again uh, out in the parks. Thank you. Any uh, questions or comments on that report? Yeah, on this one, Jen, I don't know if I think he's, uh, he's on 8.1 or he's on 8.1. Yeah, 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 he's on 8
not only from the educational perspective about their kids, but their professional lives as well. Would they be able to successfully work remotely? What type of sustainability would their companies have? How could they work and make sure that their kids went to school? The solace at the time was the belief that it had to be a short-term solution. It was two weeks before spring break. Parents and kids said to themselves, okay, let's just get through the next two weeks. I'm sure schools will open back up after spring vacation. And sure, things are closed now, but I'm sure sometime in April, things will open back up again. It will keep things moving. Parents believed this because that was what was told to the population. Uh, what was told to the population was that this virus potentially is so dangerous, we didn't want to overwhelm our healthcare system. We needed to flatten the curve so that our hospitals would be able to treat COVID patients in addition to the regular patients who would be admitted for heart attacks, strokes, stroke, strokes, et cetera. We respected this and we believed in the mission. Hospitals were told there were potentially so many COVID patients coming, they had to cease performing elective procedures to make sure there were enough beds available. Our health system was ready. But a funny thing has happened now that we're in mid-May. Not much has happened. There has been no rush of patients. There hasn't been mass death. We do know that if you live in a senior facility, you're at extreme risk. Other than that, there hasn't been much. And ironically, a healthcare crisis is actually leading to a healthcare-led recession. Edward Hospital alone was reporting a $50 million shortfall in revenue because of a lack of patients. The ripple effects of these decisions have been catastrophic. As of today, about 36 million people have filed for unemployment across the country. Locally, Kane County is reporting a 139% increase in child abuse cases. Neighborville is reporting a 7% increase in domestic disturbance calls and a 28% increase in domestic violence calls. Much of this is because people are drinking more during lockdown. Alcohol sales are up about 20 to 25% compared to this period of time last year. Of course, liquor stores are an essential business, but that's a rant for another meeting. People are cooped up. They're anxious and fearful, which leads them to have angry outbursts. They're trying to control things that they can't control. They may have been laid off. Their business may be on the verge of bankruptcy. They have nothing to do. And on top of it, their kids have nothing to do. Everyone is cooped up, angry, frustrated, getting on each other's nerves like nails on a chalkboard. The places they used to turn for activity have been forced to close. Again, in the beginning, we were receptive to these decisions because we didn't know what to expect. If the Fort Hill Center was closed for a little while, okay, spring soccer delayed, no problem. But two months of nothing and nothing on the horizon for the future. No exercise centers can open, no summer sports, people just sitting around, getting lazy and angry, and oftentimes using substances to try to control the situation that they cannot control. And why? Because our governor has decided, no one else should remind you that he works for us, just like you. You work for us, the people. The beauty of our country is that the people have freedom and choice. If I wanna go exercise at Fort Hill, Fort Hill or enroll my child in soccer, I should be free to make that decision. If I'm too nervous about doing these things, I have the choice to stay home. My freedom doesn't end where someone else's fear begins. Liberty doesn't work that way. As Mayor Cherico has made clear recently, all COVID deaths that have occurred in Naperville were at senior living facilities. Yes, positive cases are going up, but that's only because of increased testing. The most recent fear-mongering headline was that there was an increase of 4,000 cases in Illinois. This was plastered on the Daily Herald and Chicago Tribune pages. When one read deeper, you can see that almost 30,000 tests were done that day, a positive rate of about 12%, well below the 20% threshold that Pritzker said. And now here we are, debating about whether or not to legally challenge the governor's order. To me, there are two reasons to challenge it. First, given how the past eight weeks have unfolded, the damage being done is outweighing the safety the lockdown was supposed to provide. Kids and adults alike need an outlet, and so many of them uh, turn to the park district for this. Giving them the outlet responsibly. People have a choice. Don't make that choice for them. Open the activity centers with provisions. And unless there's a study that says a bunch of nine-year-olds playing youth soccer is like a Petri dish for the virus, let the kids play soccer. Let's use a little bit of common sense here and not be swayed by fear. Second, our political system is based on checks and balances. The Neighborville Park District challenging this order will be a real wake-up call to those who believe their orders must be followed or else. Governor Pritzker last night threatened to take business licenses away from those businesses who violate his order. He must be challenged, and by a group like the Park District who can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Springfield machine. Look no further than at Elon Musk, the founder of Tesla and SpaceX. Alameda County in California wouldn't let him open the Tesla factory. He said to them, I'm opening it. The county said no. Musk then spoke with Texas officials about moving Tesla there. And what do you know? The county gave him approval to open. Unfortunately, for there to be change, risk must be taken. Pressure must be applied. History is, our, is, is on our side. If our founders simply decided to go along with the additional tax on tea, we may well not be here today. 
Sometimes decisions are simply wrong and they must be challenged. I'll conclude with a quote by Ayn Rand. The smallest minority on earth is the individual. I'm respectfully asking you to stand up for individuals to make their own choices about their own lives and to challenge the governor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't believe anybody else has raised their hand. If there's anyone like, else that would like to speak on this agenda item, please raise your hand and you'll be recognized. President Jenner. Uh, Commissioner Riley, we're gonna try to get the public comments in first and then the commissioner comments, but I, I don't see any other members of the public raising their hand. So uh, Commissioner Riley, you have the floor. I'd just like to say that. Is it, is it the standard Roberts rule of order for the first and the second to speak first? Yeah. Commissioner Riley, you have the floor, and I, I saw you raise your hand. Commissioner Egan, you'll, you'll come speak right after uh, Commissioner Riley. This uh, agenda item was put on per board policies by uh, two commissioners bringing it forward, which I, uh, I support that process. I uh, do want to uh, make note of the fact that uh, I do not support the supporting rationale that is on this uh, agenda item under under details. Uh, it may be somebody else's opinion, but it's not mine. That's all. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Egan? Thank you, uh, Commissioner Ganner, and we can, can address the point of order, I guess, at a later time uh, with, with Dirk. But I do want to commend you. We don't see a lot of uh, controversy uh, within the Naperville Park District, and, and the way that you've handled this meeting is the best that I've seen in all my years. So with that said, I'll get into uh, uh, my comments here. I fully support the use of legal action against the governor. I believe his actions are arbitrary and capricious. We need to be separated from Chicago. We are an informed citizen, citizenry, and we can make decisions for ourselves. Parents can parent their own children. While that comment may seem to be overreaching to some, I'm in a high-risk group and an advocate for making my own decision. I do not begrudge anyone who chooses to stay at home or wear a mask in public. The most valuable right we have in this country is the right to choose. I have seen more email traffic on this subject than all my years as a park commissioner. The overwhelming comments were in support of opening the park district as well as supporting legal action against the governor of Illinois. There is no logical reason for Naperville, DuPage County, and Will County to be lumped in with Chicago. There is no reason to change the 11 previously established regions, regions to be changed under executive order. It is no secret that I consider taxation as a necessary evil. To continue the legalized theft, commonly known as property taxes, against businesses and our constituency who are struggling is appalling. The pain of legalized theft is, ex is exacerbated when businesses are struggling to meet ends, to have to meet ends and pay our constituency. Who must pay their taxes? This is not 1918 or 1919. We have come a long way with the ability to educate. TVs and internet exist where they did not previously. The governor's constant and consistent TV ap appearances reinforce statewide numbers. DuPage and Will are below those numbers. We have a right to make our decisions at this point. I fully supported the first lockdown, but we are now educated and constantly seeking information. We are a free people. Parents should be free to choose how their children participate in sports. The impact on our children is too great. We have consistently seen input from experts and residents indicating that they are more than capable of making decisions for their household, as well as citing the rise of abuse, whether that is in the form of alcohol, drug, or child abuse, which far outweigh the risk of being deprived of our constitutional rights. Open Naperville. Open the state of Illinois. Safely and digitally. Diligently. Do it now. If Chicago must open last, I am perfectly willing to accept Chicago is last. Finally, I call on our highly trained, silly, seriously motivated attorney and his firm to represent their clients across the state of Illinois on a pro bono basis. Hansel Blink, please stand up for the Constitution. Thank you. Commissioner McGrew. Thank you, President Janner. I want to first of all thank uh, all the feedback that we've got from residents. Uh, it's been overwhelming. Um, we've received opinions and desires from all sides, from parents, people that work in healthcare, athletic coaches, fitness professionals, mental health professionals. Uh, the uh, overwhelming messages I've seen are from people literally pleading 
begging the park district to do something to safely open up parks and make youth sports available, of course, for people who choose to participate. And, and that's, that's the key word, choose or choice. No one's suggesting we force people to use our parks or put their kids in our programs. It's called freedom. People should have the freedom to choose whether or not they're willing to accept risk in their lives. So here's the very difficult predicament the Park District, Naperville Park District is faced with. We're not allowed to pick and choose which parts of this order to follow. There are many programs we can open safely right now if we had any flexibility from the governor to make local decisions. Baseball is a perfect example. It's ridiculous that kids are not playing Little League Baseball right now. We've also heard from mental, profes mental professionals, health professionals, and they are telling us the damage we're doing to public health with this continued shutdown is a significant cost that needs to be addressed, especially for kids. We're being told that we're causing potentially permanent damage to our kids' social, emotional, and physical development. It all seems pretty obvious to me. Kids, keeping kids isolated from their peers for months and missing spring athletics to continue this for what seems like several more months with no real end in sight, to me, is tantamount to child abuse. And I'm not gonna be complicit in child abuse. The current path, it's not acceptable, should not be accepted. This virus needs to be taken seriously, but a conversation needs to take place, especially at park districts. Are we actually being counterproductive and causing more damage to physical and mental health than this virus has the ability to do? So it's my position that we explore all options to break free from the order from Springfield to allow us to make our own safe and responsible decisions in order to allow our constituencies the freedom of choice. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner McBroom. Commissioner Todd. I know that um, Pritzker's plan was really created from a recommendation of his uh, medical experts. And, uh, you know, the data right now shows that we're really closing on the next phases of, the, of his plan. Um, I think we have a plan in place that um, Executive Director McGurry put out that says we're gonna be opening, you know, starting our programs as soon as um, June 1st. So I, I, I think that it doesn't, it's, it's really a mute point of us. I, it doesn't make sense to me for us to be, you know, trying to do litigation for programs that we're gonna open up anyways, uh, June 15th. Um, I think our, our, the plan as presented by Executive Director McGurry is a very reasonable plan and follows the guidelines. Um, you know, I know people are very passionate about Little League. Uh, the Little League World Series has already been canceled for this year. So it's a moot point. Um, I, think, I think, yes, kids should play baseball, but let's not worry about Little League for, for God's sakes. So I think it's, um, I don't think it's in the best interest for, for the park district to, to litigate this matter. I think the bottom line issue really is more whether or not the data from the Western suburbs should be part of the Northeast region data that uh, Pritzker's uh, identified. And I really think the municipality should be fighting that fight, not the Naperville Park District. Thanks. Thank you. Any other, uh, any other discussion? President Janner? Yes, Commissioner Riley. I'd just like to say that uh, while we have received a significant amount of, of input on this from the community, uh, certainly very, very strong support uh, from uh, Little League parents and coaches uh, to open up uh, you know, programs for the summer. And I think Commissioner or Executive Director McGurry has outlined a, a rational plan uh, for doing that. Um, I will say, though, that when it comes to taking legal action or uh, suing the state, uh, the emails that I saw were definitely against a lawsuit. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Todd? Vice President King, Commissioner Carlson, anything uh, from your end? Yes, Vice President King. Yeah, I just want to I just uh, want to thank the public um, for for weighing in on this on, on both sides. Um, this is one of the best things that we do as commissioners or anyone that's elected officials 
is listen to the public and and everyone has opinions and we we should listen to them and it's great that they they're voicing them so thank you for thank the public for doing that i think we're all list, all looking for some balance in our life uh, whether it's work balance or whether it's you know this corona balance or exercise balance we're we're trying to get that that balance and trying to find that new normal that we're going to go into um and what that is we don't really know we're, we're trying to figure that out and work through the phases of this so we really want to get out there um, as a like probably community and do some physical activity, watch the kids play, get back to that normal um, routine of watching your son or daughter play baseball on a, a weekday or weekend night or something like that and just and see. And then also go out and use the parks as, your, as an adult as well too. go out there and play basketball. So we're just trying to figure this, figure this out. But we really have to keep in mind community safety and the health and well-being of our, our community. And that's kind of what we're we're in charge of here. And I think, you know, I think we have a good plan. Um, but we'd like to see that, see, see it open now. And actually, you know, the governor is taking that choice away from the municipalities, away from the, the park districts. So, you know, I'm, I'm in favor of going forward with this lawsuit. Um, and maybe it just to get the, the, the reins back into the community and, and for our, for our voters and for the community of Naperville, because, you know, we're, we're in a position where the, it is down. We're, we're lucky in this area um, to not have high coronavirus uh, activity going on right now or anything else. I think if we can do this smart and safe, and I know we can with the staff that we have, the professionals that we have here, um, I think it's time to open it up and, and go forward with this. So thank you. Thank you, Vice President King. Any other comments? Yeah. Carlson, please. Yep. So, as as much as uh, I uh, am eager as just like anybody else to uh, get everything open, I am, you know, I'm probably more cautious than uh, other people just because um, studying the disease or the virus, I think, um, is uh, could be a challenge with with the fact that a lot of people who might be uh, affected by it don't show uh, symptoms and if those you know if we have a, a god forbid a spike or whatever because we open you know I, I'm in favor of us opening but I'm I'm uh, wary of what's out there that's that's what I'll say you know I think we you know have to be uh, and, and I think we all are as commissioners wary of that but you know it, it scares me to think of uh, if something, you know, tragic would happen because of that. And, you know, I have a, an older mother and, you know, just the, the, uh, the propagation of the disease is pretty aggressive in case we do it. And I understand that, you know, DuPage County and Naperville, we are low um, right now. And I, you know, hope that continues. So, I'm in favor of opening it. I'm I'm wary, but I'm in favor of it. Thank you. I can just add. Uh, first of all, is there any other any other comments from any commissioners? Any uh, seeing none. If I could just add a point of clarification here, uh, this agenda item is is basically a yes vote to this agenda item. Says that the board is willing to consider consider. Uh, legal action and, and uh, the details of that would be discussed in uh, executive session under under pending litigation. I think everyone would agree that it would be inappropriate to discuss pending litigation in a format such as this. So again, just to clarify, a yes vote here is simply a yes vote to consider uh, this action and it's not a yes vote to direct our legal counsel to, to move forward. So seeing no more discussion, uh, Bridget, would you please take the roll? Commissioner Egan? Aye. Commissioner McBroom? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. Commissioner Todd? No. President Janner? Yes.
six one. Next, we'll move on to agenda item eight point two. All committee meetings shall be broadcast and recorded via Zoom or similar application and allow for public participation. Move to approve new business item 8.2. Second. Second. Motion, Vice President King. Second, Commissioner Egan. Any discussion on this item? President Janner. Yes, uh, Commissioner Riley. Uh, could I ask uh, Omar if this presents any special problems from his standpoint? If we continue in this format, no. However, if we start having uh, in-person meetings, that could. Uh, a substantial cost, depending on the location that we choose to do so. Um, as you know, this has obviously become a way to overcome the fact that we have to social distance. Um, However, there's no, uh, you know, there's there's drawbacks to this. Obviously, there has to be someone controlling, you know, who's who's speaking, who's not. Uh, the video and audio quality at times is not ideal. So it all depends on what kind of uh, quality expectations we have, um, and whether or not we decide to continue in this manner. Thank you. I would I would support uh, the idea of uh, allowing Zoom as an alternative. But at uh, whatever point in time we can get back to face-to-face -face meetings, I would not like to see face-to-face -face meetings go away uh, because as uh, we can all see, there are limitations to the current technology. Uh, but I think you know, having the ability for people uh, to be able to participate uh, via Zoom or another program, in addition to any face-to-face -face meetings that we might resume, I would be supportive of that. Can I ask Attorney Price to, to weigh in from a, a legal standpoint here, please? It, just one qualification so that everybody's aware of it. The authority to do these Zoom meetings is part of the executive orders setting aside the Open Meetings Act. And so when the executive orders eventually end, that set aside, uh, and, um, they're anticipating going into legislative session into the month. And um, if you like the Zoom meetings, and that includes the people listening, let your legislators know that they should make this a permanent change to the Open Meetings Act. Uh, so until that happens, though, whenever the executive orders end or if they're declared unconstitutional, for example, uh, we might not have the power to do Zoom meetings. I just wanted to make that clear that we'll, we'll do that this passes, and, and as we are doing for this under our, our remote policy, we'll do it for as long as we can, but just recognize it might get taken away from us. Thank you. Commissioner Egan. Yeah, I, I think it's important to note that, you know, the way that I wrote this, and, and I don't want to speak for Commissioner McBroom, but the, the second was allow committee meetings to be broadcast. So even pre-COVID, the motion is that these meetings, committee meetings, would be broadcast via Zoom and allow for public participation. The rationale specifically points out that having committee meetings where people can't participate in the middle of the day or expecting them to take vacation time from their work in order to come and participate is, deprives them of participating in the meetings on a regular basis. Technology has improved. So if I wanted to participate in a meeting from my workplace, I don't have to take time off. I can go off and participate in the manner that I am here as a regular citizen, give my input, and then sign off. I think that's a beautiful thing. More importantly, that the meetings are recorded, that anybody can come back and play them back. There is no shroud of secrecy. The drapes aren't closed on the windows. Open the windows, let the sun shine in. President Janner. You know, I, I'll get to you in one second. I'd like Bridget to explain what we're currently doing with regard to our committee meetings, and then, uh, I think that we'll go to Commissioner Broom and then Nick Broom and then Commissioner Todd. So Bridget, would you kindly share with us exactly what's going on with the committee meetings right now from a, a recording standpoint? Um, we record all open meetings, including committee meetings, um, audio generally for committees, but we can transition to video as well. Um, they are available 
upon request. Um, we also publicly publish and give information on how to participate. Um, we are very flexible with meeting times arranged through the committee and with the board members that are on the committee. They choose the time to meet. Um, we put in as many uh, processes in place to make sure that not only are the recordings available, but the minutes are posted as soon as they are approved well within the open meeting and requirements. Thank you. Commissioner McBrew? Uh, yeah, this idea of uh, doing Zoom meetings uh, brought to me by Commissioner Egan. I, I just felt like it was a pretty harmless request. My, my audio uh, cut out when um, Dirk was speaking. I, I don't know, was there a liability question about uh, having video uh, available? It just seems like uh, the technology's here. I, I don't know why we would consider doing it unless there's some huge hurdle. Like, no, so it, it wasn't about liability at all. It was about permission to have, and, and it's, uh, I may have missed the point of Commissioner Egan about being broadcast. That's different than the remote participation like through a Zoom meeting. That this, the, the remote participation aspect of these meetings, um, that's subject to the executive order and, and that's how that part of the Open Meetings Act got set aside. But that was a different concern than Commissioner Egan just expressed about um, just broadcasting them, even if the people who are on the committee have to gather in person, if say the uh, executive orders are struck down, uh, we can still broadcast. That's the that's the concern, and I, that's different than what I was talking about. Commissioner Todd, I think I saw you next, and then back to Commissioner Regan. Commissioner Todd, did you have something on this, please? Uh, yes. Um, I just want to say I've been on this board for a very long time, and I've been on a variety of committees, and um, folks have always had the ability to uh, come in and participate. And I've, I've never heard of someone complain about the fact that they couldn't um, provide input. Um, I think we've always gone out of our way that if someone was interested in a particular topic, um, that we would make sure that we would get their input or um, they would appear at the meeting and provide that input. Um, minutes are always published. Um, and as Bridget said, you know, the um, audio of it is available. I don't see that, you know, um, I don't see a lot of people um, complaining about the fact that they can't get access to our meetings. And I think the expense of having to um, uh, go to Zoom and, and support Zoom or s some other um, thing is, is something that we don't necessarily need if, it, if it's not a problem. Why are we trying to invent one? Um, so I, I, I just don't see what the, what the issue is. People are not, have not been complaining about the fact that they can't get access to our committee meetings. They come, they participate, and um, that's, that's all I gotta say. Manager Sandoval, can I ask you what the what the cost of uh, let's just say an hour or two hour committee meeting would be if we used Zoom, and then presumably if we did use Zoom, would it replace the need for a tape recorder or any kind of video camera because it's recording everything as we speak? So, kind of a loaded question, and I'll say why. Um, right now, this works well because we're in a small room and we don't have everyone in presence. Um, if we did. We wouldn't be social distancing. If we go to a larger area with a larger group, we would have to purchase and invest in uh, additional microphones and a way better camera. To give you an idea where electronics are right now because of COVID, um, I placed an order for three um, high-end wide-angle cameras, one that would be used in here, ordered that April 14th. I may, I may get them in July, maybe. Um, and at that point, who knows where we're at with, you know, the our current situation. So I think um, as far as the technology, yes, it's there. Yes, it's come a long way. But it becomes a decision of what are we willing to invest in. And the problem that we're trying to solve, as well as we would have to pick one static location to do this. Um, when we picked Fort Hill, uh, as this was brought up previously, um, it would cost about 10 grand to have microphones dropped from the ceiling. That would be three microphones. 
a uh, HD uh, camera, and um, a there was one piece of technology that was you know hit or miss, but it was one that would get pointed to a person on the screen. Because right here, I'm not in the camera shot. Right? So that's another limitation. So really it comes down to what are we trying to solve? Are we going to budget something for this? And what's our long-term solution for this? Thank you. Any other comments? Commissioner Regan? So I, I don't know if I, I need an amendment to my motion, but uh, the, the fact that Bridget pointed out that our constituency has to, whether it be call, email, uh, carrier pigeon, pick your mode of, of communication, that they have to call and request this. In today's day and age, that's absolutely unacceptable. In a previous life, we uh, got cool little microphones and a, and a secure carrying case. Now, this was for recording and not necessarily camera purchases. I think it was south of 20 grand. $20,000, $10,000, pick your number. For the public to have access to what is being said, it's a small price to pay, especially when considering that you're ballooning the levy and overtaxing the people and then depriving them their rights. That, that, that's troubling to me. I'd like to uh, I'd like to propose that we amend this motion to state for the time being that all committee meetings shall be broadcast and recorded via Zoom or similar application and allow for public participation. That's the original part. And simply add to that, so long as the governor's order related to this is uh, is in place, and then uh, we could presumably use this format here in the short term. And then we can reevaluate the decision uh, and the expenditure on a long-term basis. So um, is there a second, anyone that would like to second that amendment? Second. Any discussion on the amendment? I Commissioner, object. Commissioner Todd? Commissioner I'm, Todd? I'm, I'm trying to understand why we even, why you're even, why are you even making it an amended, you know, um, what, what, what problem are we trying to solve here? We, we're already doing it. We're doing it for the duration. So what problem are we solving by putting forth this amendment that says we're going to use Zoom in, right now? We're, we're using Zoom right now. It's about going forward to allow public participation, Marie. So if I'm sitting in my office in Darien, you're forcing me to take time away from my office where I could sit there in the public, provide my comments, and the committee can go on with its business. More importantly, I could sit at my desk and watch what you guys are doing. We've never had a complaint from somebody who, who wanted I'm to complaining, participate. And I'm a citizen, and I pay $10,000 a year in property taxes. So there you go. I mean, it was brought to my attention that we are currently using Zoom for all of our committee meetings as well as our uh, regular meetings. So, uh, Commissioner Todd, I think your point is well taken. I'll withdraw the amendment unless there's any other uh, comments or discussion on the original motion, then we'll take the original motion to a vote. Any other comments? Which I, I said, can I just clarify what we're voting for? Are we just voting for the, the using Zoom for these meetings? And if, and if what the commissioner does not a particular want to be part of a committee, we're voting to have a Zoom meeting. What are we? What are we voting on? Yeah, let me just restate it since we've been kind of back and forth here. All committee meetings shall be broadcast and recorded via Zoom or similar application, and allow for public participation. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Is there something? Can I ask the question? What exactly. time frame are you talking about here, Rich? Are we talking about right now? Or are we talk? Are you saying going forward forever? What do you? What What is this? I'm I'm still confused. Commissioner Todd, the way that the motion is currently written, it would be presumably in perpetuity unless the board changed it. Okay. So it would be from this point forward unless the board decided to make a make a change or or an amendment. 
No, All right. Your question, your question raised about participation of the members of the body. They may have to come in here physically, but we can still do a Zoom meeting, even if they have to come in physically. The, the question, with this the question here is, is about, uh, if I'm understanding it right, is about a, a quorum at the meetings, physical participation, and potentially someone that may be participating while on vacation. Now, if it goes away in the order, then you'll have to come here, but we can broadcast using Zoom, even though everybody has to be here. Okay. That's that's what this function does. Can you restate that for the group in uh, as concise a fashion as you can? So, to be clear, the motion is about broadcasting using some technology in real time. Right now, people like Commissioner Egan can participate from afar. We're encouraged to do that. But if the executive order goes away and the Open Meetings Act isn't uh, modified, then Commissioner Egan has to be here, as do all the other commissioners. You have to have a physical forum present. And you can't be away from, you know, for a uh, vacation, and you can't be away for uh, any of the other reasons. You have to participate by Zoom. You would have to be here for physical reason, and then one of the few Open Meetings Act exceptions to participate using Zoom. But even if we had everybody physically present, we could still broadcast by using Zoom to the rest of the world. And that's all that this will do, is that the day comes that we, the Open Meetings Act is back to its original form, you all, the elected officials might have to pile in, but we can still have a Zoom broadcast. Thank you. Will people be allowed to participate from, from like the commissioner you would say, from his desk in Darien? Well, in terms of submitting public comment, that'll be a procedure you'll have to adopt then. You get to determine your rules of participation. President Janet, can I just make, make a suggestion um, if, if we're able, because I can see a, a person rec meeting where we have more people that this room can accommodate, and then we would need to move a meeting to, say, Fort Hill, where we don't have the capability. So if possible, maybe, if possible, we, yeah. we can do it. That's only challenge see. Well, okay. the, the social distancing obligation is likely to go away at the same time that the ability to zoom in as an elected official goes away. So but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. That's what I Based on that comment, Commissioner Egan, how do you feel about adding the words when reasonable? When reasonable. With $10 million in reserves and when we rework the numbers, an additional minimum of $600,000, I think we can figure it out. Any other discussion? Commissioner Sorry, go ahead, Commissioner Riley. I just like a, like to make a point. Uh, Fort Hill was mentioned as possibly the site for this setup. One of the things I'd have to say is that the, uh, you know, we've met several times in the multi-purpose room in, uh, at Fort Hill, and the acoustics in that room are poor. So we need to do something to improve it so that if we're actually going to broadcast a meeting, that people can hear it and understand what's being said. That's, uh, that's part, uh, um, Commissioner Riley, that's part of the cost. That's part why it's 10, 10 grand, because we have to put soundproofing panels throughout the walls. And then it comes down to aesthetics of how does the room look. I mean, it, this, this is a decision that shouldn't be made lightly because there does have to be a substantial amount of, of investment and research done into what we decide to do moving forward. Commissioner McGroom. I, I mean, if it can be done, I, I think it's a great idea to give people the ease of of just viewing and participating remotely to one of our meetings. But uh, would it make sense to push this off to a future meeting and, and staff comes back to us and say, this is exactly what it'll cost. This is exactly what it involves. I mean, I, I would entertain that as well. Commissioner, Is it Jenner? We're, we're focused on one room for a committee meeting. This smacks of trying to deprive the people to see what is going on in these rooms. 
We need to be open and transparent. The people that we steal 10,000 plus a year from deserve it. So if we need to move different rooms, if we need to have all committee rooms, uh, committee meetings where President Janner is sitting in, in that meeting, okay. We, we, we can't drum up costs to try and deprive participation. President Commissioner, Jenner. Uh, Commissioner King, then Commissioner Todd, then Commissioner Riley. Uh, thank you, President Jenner. Um, I was just thinking of when we say like all, all committees, you know, I'm on the Park Foundation uh, meeting and sometimes we, we meet at members' homes and other, other areas throughout the community that we may not be able to have uh, a Zoom meeting or access to, to that. So I, I don't know if we can actually say all committee meetings Parks Foundation is not us. You're a member of that park of that foundation. But it says a, a committee meeting, though. It's not a it's not a park board committee. You're a member of that foundation. The foundation is separate from the park board. Okay. Commissioner Todd, then Commissioner Riley. Let, let Commissioner Riley go first. He was. He was Uh, thanks, President Janner, and thanks, uh, Commissioner Todd. I'd just like to say that I agree with Commissioner McGroom. I think we need to allow uh, Omar and his team to get a better handle on just how that is set up, because I support the idea of, of broadcasting the meetings. Uh, but I think we want to know uh, how effectively we're going to be able to do that. Uh, secondly, I do take uh, serious exception with the uh, Commissioner Egan's comment that we're stealing money from taxpayers. That's far from the truth. Any other comments? Yeah, I, I, uh, I've been kind of quiet. I, I agree with uh, with you, Commissioner Broom, Nick Broom. I'm a big fan of transparency and all for letting everybody see it, but I'd like to see a little bit more thought on this. For, so, so for that reason, I'll be voting no. Bridget, please take the roll. Vice President King? No. Commissioner Egan? Aye. Commissioner Carlson? No. Commissioner McGroom? Yes. Commissioner Riley? No. Commissioner Todd? No. President Janet? No. Our next scheduled meeting it is a uh, regular virtual meeting of the Board of Park Commissioners, May 28th, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. Hosted once again remotely right here from the administration boardroom. Now we'll move on to item 10, executive session. And I'll entertain a motion to adjourn to executive session to discuss pending litigation under 2C11 of the Open Meetings Act. Move to adjourn to executive session. Hey, Second. Uh, we'll get to you. Motion by Vice President King, second by Commissioner Riley. Discussion, uh, Commissioner Egan. Is the only litigation that we're going to be discussing is the lawsuit against the governor of the state of Illinois? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Bridget, please take the roll. Vice President King. Yes. Commissioner Riley? Yes. Commissioner Carlson? Yes. Commissioner Egan? Aye. Commissioner McGroom? Yes. Commissioner Todd? Yes. Commissioner Jenner? Yes. 13 each time I don't know what we're supposed to say here about no more action. Yeah, really, there is, there might be action. Okay. So, just in case to say that there may be action after the. There might be action after the uh, executive session. That's and uh, are we putting people in the waiting room or what are we doing? Yeah. There, first of all, folks, there may be action uh, after executive session, which I know is a little bit unusual for us, but there may be action after executive session. And I'll ask uh, Bridget and or Omar to, to explain to us the process here since we have so many people uh, so many people on the line. Yes, yeah, so essentially what we're going to create is a uh, virtual waiting area. We're going to share a document on the screen that tells everybody that we're in executive session and then we're going to dial into that private number 
that you should have received via email. And text. And text. Did everybody get that from the uh, from the board? Email or text. Email or text. Yes. Yes. So once again, in case anybody from the public didn't quite catch that, we're going to establish a virtual waiting room as sort of a holding pattern. We're going to put up a graphic that uh, explains that we are in executive session. The commissioners will dial into the executive session, and then again, there may be action after executive session. Meeting. They are better. Please enter your access code and request. Welcome to the Naperville Park District Conference and Assembly. Please stand by. You'll be joined in shortly. Please announce yourself. Will you be in the third?
Okay, good evening once again. Uh, I'd like to reconvene and uh, recall to order this regular meeting of the Naperville Park District Board of Commissioners, Thursday, May 14th, 2020, at 10.05 p.m. We'll go around and, uh, and do introductions in lieu of the uh, attendance that we took in the original meeting. Rich Janner. Ray McCurry. Kirk Price. Patrick Katie Seppi. Sue Stanish. Kevin Carlson. Omar Sandoval. Brad Wilson. Can you guys on the Zoom line there say your names? Oh, they're all muted. Hang on, guys, we're getting there. Hey, Mike King. Mike Riley. William Began the third, CPA, CMA, MAFM, MBA. Okay. Can you guys uh, uh, introduce yourselves? Uh, Josh, you want to go first? Josh McBroom. Oh, sorry. That's my bad. I turned it down. All right. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, technical error, uh, user error. Yep. All right. Uh, we can hear you guys now, so yeah, uh, please go around and introduce yourselves. You're muted. Hi, Mike King. Mike Riley. William Began the third, CPA, CMA, MAFM, MBA. Josh McBroom. I don't know if you got me earlier, but. Go, go ahead, Bobby. Bobby. Bobby Carlson. Okay, at this time, uh, we'll entertain a motion to pursue legal relief related to the Naperville Park District response to restore Illinois order, seeking authority through emergency court action, allowing the duly elected Board of Park Commissioners to make reopening decisions that are in the best interest of the community. Commissioner Egan. Uh, I'm not sure if we're having some technical issues. I'm happy to second that motion, but I think some people are stuck in the waiting room and I know I've been having some issues unmuting and muting. So can we make sure that, I don't know how many, two pages of people are, are participating in the meeting first, please? Yeah, there's nobody in the waiting room. Yeah. Is Marie good to go? No, she's frozen. Don't take the vote should this thing say for emergency court action or is that part of the moment? Check it out. It doesn't have to say Where's Marie? If you said it already, it's fine. Oh, no, I heard it said it. I'll go to the moment for a tear. I'm sorry. Wait, it's okay. Can somebody call her for her now? Like, I can't. I mean, there's no time to do with her. She's frozen. And it looks like she's complete. There we go. Oh, she back? No. She can, can she vote via uh, phone here? Um, we can call her. I can call her. Is she allowed to vote via phone? Everyone else good except for Maria? Yeah, I got King. Riley, Guillermo, uh, McBroom, and Carlson. Hey, Marie, looks like you lost on the video. You want to just participate here in the same way you did in the exec session? Sure. Thanks. Okay. Everybody else good? Anything more? Yeah. You need to put everybody together. Yeah. She's fine. Yeah. All right, since there was some uh, technical difficulties, I'm going to repeat the uh, repeat the motion. So I'll entertain. Okay, we got you, Marie. 
So I'll entertain a motion to pursue legal relief related to Naperville Park District response to restore Illinois order, seeking authority through emergency court action, allowing the duly elected Board of Park Commissioners to make reopening decisions that are in the best interest of our community. Second. Motion by President Janner, second by Commissioner Egan. Any further discussion? Bridget, please take the roll. President Janner? Yes. Commissioner Egan? He's not muted. I saw Go it. ahead. Aye. Commissioner Carlson? No. Commissioner King? Yes. Commissioner McGrew? Do you want to give us a nod, yes or no? Is that good enough? There you go. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Commissioner Riley? No. Commissioner Todd? No. Okay, mo uh, motion passes four to three. This time we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn May 14th, uh, Park District Board meeting. Second. Motion by Second. Vice President McCain, second by Commissioner Egan. This is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank, Good night. You. Thank you. Thank you.